my name is Kuiper Benson. Today we're going to be talking about the French Revolution. First, before we begin, we're going to briefly go over what revolution is. Theta Scopel talks about this in her article. She talks about the fact that intranational relations and international relations really influence what's going on in a nation, and that leads to social structural change and class conflict. So overall, um, the French Revolution saw 250,000 people die in civil wars. Over 40,000 people were executed as suspect. And 300,000 people were actually imprisoned for being suspect. So the law of suspect will be discussed later. It's very, very broad and um, almost paranoid for the people who were leading France at that time. Before we lead into what the revolution was, there's a little background on how the revolution started. So there were three different estates. Each class was an estate. So the lowest estate was the third estate. Um, that was that saw about 95% of the population. It was going to be the peasants, the lower and the middle working class. And they paid taxes. They were not exempt from anything. They saw no privileges, which was really leading to discontent within the society in France. Um, the highest estate was the first estate, and they were the clergy. They were part of the church, which led to their divine right or how they influenced the French society, and that was really an issue because they saw privileges but really didn't give anything back or give back to the lowest estates, and that was an issue. The second estate was kind of in between. It was nobility. Those people held control within France, and they fought in international wars, which they made up 1% of the population, and they held positions. They were born into those positions, so they really didn't earn any of the positions that they had, which was an issue, of course, for the third estate. When 95% of your population is revolting, it becomes an issue for everyone. The different regions had very different languages and laws and customs, which led to no unification within the state, and then they no one could work together, no one could compromise, and it becomes really a problem. Just kind of like Abraham Lincoln talked about how these states of the United States was different than the United States of America. So that was kind of like a correlation between the two. Um, there are three different phases to the Re French Revolution. The first phase was considered the leading up to the revolution. So Louis the Sixteenth married Marie Antoinette, who's an Austrian princess, and that was kind of supposed to solidify an alliance between the two countries. And the French people thought that Marie Antoinette was be corrupting the king. The king. They thought that she was demoralizing him, which became a problem because they became very unhappy with the regime and what was happening. This also was partnered with an economic crisis, which came from the French intervening with the American Revolution with no reward in return. They sent money and people over and had nothing in return, and they did it completely in spite of Great Britain. And then later, the Free Trade Treaty with Great Britain flooded the French market with cheaper British textile imports, which led to unemployment and raising prices for the local products. Also, the silk harvest failed in 1787, and there was a huge hailstorm in 1788, which led to growing prices and starvation for people who could not afford those prices. Um, in 1789, the States General met for the first time since 1614, which meant that Louis XVI was really an authoritative power within France, and people were not happy about that because he was not making great decisions for the lowest class. So the Third Estate declared a national assembly, which then led to them printing into books and pamphlets for the public to see about what was going on and how they were being mistreated, all of that stuff. So that kind of led to the storming of the Bastille. The Bastille was a prison and fortress that represented rural authority in Paris. This was in 1789, and Louis tried to annul the National Assembly, but they were very strict about what they wanted. So he, he co cooperated with them, but the guy who advised him to do this was later dismissed by King Louis, which then angered many of the people because this man, um, Jack Nectar, he was really trying to help the people, and Louis completely just dismissed him. So they stormed the Bastille, 
which then led to the fall of the regime. And the desacralization of the king was a huge aspect of the French Revolution. So the role of the king was at one time considered sacred, and as Cartier describes, since your first steps onto the throne established good social habits and even more to your glory, you provided an example of them in the midst of the French court. So he talks about how he was an example and how he was this great role model for all of France. And then later, this changes very quickly where Cartier talks about how it was rumored that the king was a leper and he bathes in blood of New Herald, which was a Roman villain, a mythical Roman villain, who attempted murder of Jesus. And so he was very desacralized in that aspect. Um, the church lands were confiscated and the statues were destroyed. The Christian calendar was completely dismissed which began the, I, the, all of the worship was dismissed within France, and the supreme being became a huge, huge thing, which was a cult of reason. And this was Rob Spears' really, like, finding moment within the French Revolution. And the Jacobins, who were much more radical than the Girondins, um, tried to push the supreme being, and they tried to make this a very radical, anti-royal, regime rather than the Jiridans who were much more moderate they kind of wanted to balance everything out the decristalizations really turned devout and royal people against the republic because they were very unhappy they wanted their churches back they wanted to be able to practice their religion and freedom this leads to the second phase when Louis and Marie Antoinette are put on the trials um the Jacobins are really in power and they really influence what happens to Louis and Marie Antoinette. They're both executed. Their trials were completely unfair, lasting three days for the Girardins, who was really the party of compromise. And so that led to more and more discontent. But the Jacobins really had power. Rob Spear was extremely paranoid with his power and his party's power, and he wanted to make sure that he had total control. So he led to all of these things that pushed against what the king was back in the past. And this led to the Reign of Terror, which was between 19, 1793 and 1794. Um, this was when terror hovered over France, where everyone lived, not only in the greatest penury, but in horror of every kind. This is Minatra in his um, diary, and he talks, it's really just um, how describing how life was during that time. This led to much more discontent until Napoleon came and he had a coup d'etat in 1799, which really led to his empire over France. And so that was kind of the basis of what happened in the French Revolution before Napoleon came into power because his era is really considered a different part of France.